Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 442A, I rise to give the following statement on behalf of the House Business Committee, which met on Tuesday, 6th August 2024, to prioritize business for consideration during the week. Honorable Speaker, members should take note that the House further varied its calendar yesterday and is set to commend its long recess on Friday, 16th August 2024, that is next week, and resume its regular sittings for the third part of the third session of the House to finalize with consideration of the remaining cabinet nominees within the set timelines and also conclude any other urgent business pending before it. I therefore urge all members and committees to conclude any urgent matters before them and ensure that there is smooth transaction of all priority business before the recess begins at the end of next week. Honorable Speaker, with regards to business for Tuesday next week, the House is expected to consider the second reading of the following bills, if not concluded today. A, the County Government Additional Allocations Bill, Senate Bill Number 19 of 2024. B, the Coffee Bill, Senate Bill Number 10 of 2023. And C, the Equalization Fund Administration Bill, Senate Bill Number 14 of 2023. Additionally, Honorable Speaker, debate will also be undertaken on the following motions, should they not be concluded today. One, report on the consideration of the inspection visit to the semi-autonomous institutions of the East African community in Uganda. Two, is a report on enhancing reporting of parliamentary business on online platforms. Three, report on the consideration of the consolidated fund services expenditures for the supplementary estimates. One, for the financial year 2024-2025. Five, report on consideration of a public petition on funds spent contrary to the provisions of Article 223 of the Constitution. Five, <coughs> Report on the implementation status of reports on petitions and resolutions passed by the House. Six, report on the alleged unfair trade practices by foreign investors in Kenya. Seven, second report on employment diversity, audit in public institutions. And eight, report of the extraordinary session of the sixth Pan-African Parliament, PAP. Honorable Speaker, we are also scheduled to have for the first reading the Livestock Bill of 2024, Bill number, uh, sorry, the Livestock Bill, National Assembly Bill number 34 of 2024. And Honorable Speaker, as indicated uh, in the House Business Committee, I have since written to the Principal Secretary, the State Department of Livestock, asking the PS, or rather the Permanent Secretary, Secretary to, or rather, uh, we got the approval of the House Business Committee, Honorable Speaker, this Tuesday to stay the first reading of this bill and any further consideration of the bill to allow the ministry to conduct sensitization of the public and stakeholders on the contents of the bill and the policy underpinning this bill. Honorable Speaker, as you are aware, this bill was to be to appear for first reading and further consideration by the committee. And we since agreed that the ministry needs to do further sensitization to members of the public. Because there has been a lot of propaganda online uh, and we may see this bill suffer the same fate as the finance bill of 2024 being demonized with a lot of untruths. And therefore, we, I have since written to the principal secretary to conduct further public sensitization. And upon completion of this uh, sensitization process, we shall await their further guidance on the bill on whether they want to proceed with it in its current form or there are things out of the public sensitization process that they will uh, need to reconsider and they will inform us in due course. Finally, our speaker, in conclusion, the House Business Committee will reconvene on Tuesday, 13th August, 2024, to schedule business for the rest of that week. And I wish to lay this statement on the table of the House, as I also lay on the table of the House the letter addressed to the Principal Secretary 
State Department of Livestock Development, staying the first reading and further consideration of the Livestock Bill pending that sensitization program by the Ministry. Honorable Speaker, allow me to say the sensitization process that we have asked the Ministry to do is informed by what the experiences we had with the Finance Bill. That Honorable Speaker, we have seen as has been considered by His Excellency the President, Ministries author bills, send those bills to the House and abandon them. Mm -hmm. They do not take time to sensitize members of the public on the policies underpinning those bills. And Honorable Speaker, when then people read things and interpret them in their own way, uh, some that may not be very accurate and correct, they misinform members of the public and use whatever has been published to incite members of the public. And we have seen, seen a lot of misinformation and disinformation being peddled online about this livestock bill. And I have engaged the principal secretary and uh, the Ministry of Livestock Development. They have clarified a number of things, but we are asked them to engage all the stakeholders, who, even those who have been uh, spreading the falsehood and misinformation online, so that they get to understand the policies underpinning the publication of that bill before it comes to us for consideration. So that our ministries, before they uh, get bills being considered by the House, they will have engaged with stakeholders, they will have made it known to members of the public what policies underpin the bills that are being published and being brought to this House, Honorable Speaker, so that Parliament does not bear the brunt of all the things that are being brought uh, and the owners of those particular bills are not explaining to the public what is it that they want to achieve. And many of the provisions in these bills are for the betterment of our country and for the good of the, of the same public, Honorable Speaker. But when the public get misinformed and disinformed, they then uh, get to demonize uh, Parliament and imagine that Parliament comes up with all these bills, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, we want the ministries in line with what the President has said, that they must take ownership of even communication within their own de state departments. And that's why we've asked the State Department for Livestock to make sure that they own up to everything that is provided for in this bill. By going back to the public, sensitize the public on each and every clause in that bill, the policies underpinning each of the provisions in the bill, then they send it back to us in whatever form they will send it back to us for further consideration by the House including the public participation, Honorable Speaker, that we normally do as a house. And you have seen, Honorable Speaker, with the social health insurance fund bills or the health bills, what the courts have said when they nullify those bills, that there ought to have been more sensitization. Unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, and I don't know why the courts would have taken that direction, the courts told Parliament to sensitize members of the public. Parliament cannot sensitize members of the public. It is owners of the bills in the ministry, and we've also asked the Ministry of Health to go back and sensitize members of the public on the policies and provisions of uh, that, uh, the four bills or the three bills that were nullified by the High Court. They then sent them back to us for public participation. The public participation uh, program is the only opportunity that Parliament has uh, to engage with the members of the public and get feedback from the people on whatever they have been sensitized by the owners of the bill. With that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the statement. Thank you, Majority Leader. Next. Number eight, the county governments are